ISB and thinking about you. It's probably my favorite mug right now, but besides the point. Hi, I'm Laura Wren Taylor. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you along a day in the life, actually a week in the life of a creative writing major because that's what I am. I am 23 years old. I'm about to start my own publishing business. I plan on releasing my first poetry collection out into the world around spring, probably end of spring or beginning of summer. I haven't decided exactly when. I'm in the middle of edits right now, not complicated ones, which is why I think I'll be able to release it so soon. I wrote this poetry collection back in Actually, come to think of it, most of the poems I wrote, I have written over the course of like two or three years. And it was only until spring of last year that I actually decided to like arrange the poems in the order that they're in now. So a lot of the corrections that I'm making editing wise are mostly format related and just figuring out stylistically how I want to put things together. So getting back on topic, I just got back from my first class of the week. That class is called Composition and Rhetoric. It started at 11 today and I probably got home around, I want to say one o'clock and it's 14.50 now. So I've actually been home for quite some time, but I've sort of just been chilling. Anyways, right now I am catching up on some slides that we covered in class today. And I also am watching a Sarah Mae Sutton video as I am doing that just to keep myself entertained. I also made a coffee as you could see in this mug that I just showed you. Also, at some point today, I need to edit the first episode of my podcast, The Book Woman Podcast, which all the links to that will be down below. By the time this vlog actually comes out, the episode will be, I mean, I'll make sure of that. I also, at some point this week, wanna get back into writing my book, Project Walker. That's just what I'm temporarily calling it uh, until I come up with a final title. I have a tentative one, but obviously I'm not gonna tell you what it is until I actually decide if it's the right one or not. I don't know if transcribing is the right word, but I plan on switching over into a digital format once I feel like I need to do that again. I know I've kind of set myself up for a tedious time in terms of getting all the words that I've written down onto the computer and in the document, but for some reason, this is how I'm able to get a lot of my words out and I can't seem to get it to work any other way. So this is just how we're gonna be writing it. However many, I think 30 something chapter fantasy, high fantasy novel. Um, so that's gonna be fun. But other than that, there really isn't much else going on. And if there is, suddenly, for some reason, I will let you know. Thank you so much for continuing to watch this video. I'm assuming by this point, if you are still watching, that you're somewhat interested in what I have to say. So I finished all of the notes that I had to take for the class that I had today. This class has been a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. I've heard mixed reviews from people who have taken it before. This is one of my core classes, so it's not like I really had a choice in terms of taking it. Like I have friends who have taken this class before in different programs and they said it was all right. Uh, but I do really like the teacher, so that also helps as always. But aside from schoolwork related things, I plan on reading a little bit. I'm just, right now I'm deciding which book to read. Um, I'm choosing between Guild by Raven Kennedy and then The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This is the first book of the month book that I've ever gotten. I started reading it last night, just before dinner. So I only got a couple of pages in before I had to, you know, eat. Um, and it was all right. I think it's just one of those things where I'm gonna have to read a little bit more to get into it. The premise is really interesting. If you don't know who Juliana Tofana is, go watch the Bailey Syrian video on it because she did a really great job of explaining it, I think. But basically it's about this woman who works in an apothecary in the 1700s, 1791, I believe. And she disguises her poisons in like makeup bottles and perfume bottles and things like that. And that's basically so women can go and 
kill people. That's basically what Juliana Tofana did. And she lived earlier on in history. She was alive in the 1500s, I believe. There isn't a whole lot of information on her, but I always found her story really interesting. So when I saw the synopsis for The Lost Apothecary, I figured, let's give it a shot. I tried to write actually a little bit about Juliana Tofana as far as, you know, doing a retelling goes, but that didn't really work out so well. Just as a side tangent, I know there are a lot of writers out there who are always fearful of talking about their books before they're ready to come out because they're afraid other people will take that idea and try to write it themselves. But even if that were the case, and also not saying that I would divulge the details of my book before I came out, but somehow someone found out the plot and wrote about it, I still feel like the execution would be different. And that's what I always try to tell myself. Um, because that's a fear I have as well, that if someone did find out about the plot and try to write it and publish it, um, they would do it a lot differently than I would. Anyways, Guild is a King Midas retelling. And it's going in a direction I'm not entirely, like, I wasn't entirely privy to what the plot was. I did watch one review, or technically two, by Rachel, Reads with Rachel. And she gave, like, a, like, she did spoil the series. Like, that's the kind of review that it was. But it's not like she gave every single detail that one possibly could in a review. So there are just a couple of surprises and things I just weren't, or wasn't expecting so that's been interesting and it's just ironic that after all of the books that I've bought especially within the past week the book that I ended up liking and picking up and going with and I'm now like almost 50% of the way through is the book that was available on Kindle Unlimited all along that's probably been the most mildly frustrating thing that's happened to me in the past week so I decided to go with Guild because I am further along in this book and I'm just a little bit more into what's going on right now and that it just makes the most sense of course I open my kindle upside down to oop, and I almost dropped it okay we're off to a really great start so as of right now I am 44 percent of the way through Okay, I just got introduced to a character who, without spoiling this book too much, because at this point in time, I do recommend this book to people as long as they know what the trigger warnings are. I just got introduced to a character who I know what's going to happen to them and it breaks my heart like reading what I'm reading right now because the main character, Oren, is forming a relationship right now with this person or is about to. And I just like, I know what's going to happen and it freaking, ugh, it hurts. <laughs> the main character, Oren, is now traveling. This author's prose are so beautiful and well written that even if the plot sucked, which I don't think it does, by the way, um, I still feel like the author's writing is just so good that it would be able to get me through it. But like I said, I love the plot. The characters are interesting. At least the main character is interesting. And yeah, I'm just loving it so far. One, I know my hair looks kind of weird, like what even is this hairstyle? It's barely a style, but when I get out of the shower, I like to put my hair in a braid or two. This time it's two while my hair is still drying. And that's because when I finally take my hair out of the braids, it looks really nice and wavy and the curls are like really nicely defined and it's not too frizzy and it's just nice. So you'll see the end result tomorrow when I go to school and take my hair out of those braids. Second thing, is here's one of the new mugs that I got last week and it says this weekend is going to be lit or airy and I know it's not the weekend it's Wednesday but I all my other mug I shouldn't say all my other mugs but a lot of the ones I've been using lately are dirty and need to be washed or whatever so 
I decided to finally pick this one up. And just like the other mugs, I love it. It's really cute. It has books on it, so why wouldn't I like it? It has this coffee that I've been nursing like all day. And no matter how hard I try, it's like I just can't seem to finish it. I've already reheated it once and I just I can't seem to finish it. So I'm probably going to spend the rest of the day reading because today I just haven't been able to get into the mind space that I need to get into uh, to do other FLT related things. And by the way, when I say FLT, I mean folklore tales. So I have a podcast episode that I need to edit and I haven't done that yet. I want it to go up before the end of the week before Saturday. It'll probably come out on Friday and that's when I'll start uploading bi-weekly on Fridays. And then in between the BookFluent podcast videos slash episodes coming out, that's when I'll upload my regular vlogs like this one. So by the time this video comes out, the first episode should be out. And if it is, I'll make sure to leave all the links to the podcast down below. It, as of right now, it is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and then obviously here. The book that I'm going to try and get into tonight, more so because I already started it, is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I am only on page 18, and that's chapter 1. Um, no... No, it can't be chapter one. I think it's chapter two, actually, because we have switched POVs. Yeah. Okay, so chapter two. I'm enjoying it as much as one can when they're that close to the beginning. Like, I'm not that far into it. But anyway, I figure I could also show you some of the textbooks I got for class because they're mostly craft books. So if you watching this are a writer or you want to look into a little bit more about how books are made and how they're written and all that, then I sort of tentatively suggest reading like a writer by Francine Prose, which I don't know if that's her actual last name or not, but it'd be really cool if it was. I think I read the first paragraph and that's about it actually. So far it seems all right, but this was only $20. So as far as like suggesting textbooks go, this is probably the one, one of a few that I do suggest maybe looking into because there's this textbook that I had to get and that was like over a little over a hundred dollars. So as far as writing craft books go, this is probably something worth looking into. I just wanted to bring it to the attention of any of my subscribers, any of the 25 of you that are currently subscribed to this channel. Um, just again, yeah, wanted to bring this to your attention. Anyways, I am going to get into reading The Lost Apothecary. This is another one of those things where I'm just going to let you know as I go how I like it. And then we'll go from there. Jordy! Jordy! Oh. <laughs> so it's the next day. I didn't really vlog much today. I had school and then my boyfriend and I went to go look at an apartment that we might be moving into in June. It's not confirmed yet, but it's just a thing that we're kind of tentatively looking at. A lot was going on in terms of me being in situations where vlogging wasn't really an option. Like I said, it's Thursday. It's almost eight o'clock at night. And I wanted to show you like what those braids did to my hair. It looks nice on this side, but then sometimes it gets kind of like messy and stuff. I already, I've had it in a bun since I've gotten back home, but I wanted to show you guys. So I took it back out of the bun and here we are. It still looks pretty good, I think. Um, at this point in time, I'm debating on whether or not I want to edit the first episode of the Book Fluent podcast or if I want to do some writing. I have been doing a whole lot of that lately. I have caught up on putting everything that I've written in the notebook up until this point and I've now put it all in my writing software. Dabble, that's the software that I use as opposed to using Scrivener Word. The Dabble software you can use on pretty much any device that can access the internet. You can use it on an internet browser. You can type on your phone as opposed to typing up in like the notes app on your phone and then putting it in the software like you would probably for Scrivener. 
I just checked and I am on chapter four of The Lost Apothecary. So I'll leave a link to Bailey Sarian's video on Juliana Tofana. It's really good, entertaining, especially if you're into makeup. But it's also good to listen to as kind of like a podcast in case you do have other things to do while you're watching it or listening to it rather. And then after watching that video, read the synopsis of The Lost Apothecary and like you'll you'll get it. But the added fact of like linking the two stories, both POVs of the two main characters, I think is a really interesting aspect that I'm excited to get into and see where it goes. I have my predictions of how the two stories are related. So basically the book is about Nella who runs the apothecary that's mentioned in the title. Her whole thing is that she puts these poisons in disguisable vials that may or may not look like like makeup bottles or perfume bottles. Then we have Caroline who's the character that's in our present day timeline and she's an aspiring historian and one day while she's like with this group of like people kind of it's called mudlarking where I think that you like you look for cool objects in the ocean. She's on a vacation that she was supposed to go on with her ex-husband and then point being she finds a lost file that looks like it, I guess could be related to the lost apothecary hence the title of the book and then she kind of goes on a whole thing of researching about this apothecary and then just based off of what the synopsis says the two stories are linked beyond what we know at this point in time. Again, I'm only in chapter four. Not a whole lot has been revealed. I'm just telling you like everything that you learn in the synopsis and in the very beginning of the story so that none of this is spoilers. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. My class tomorrow is going to be online. It's going to be virtual because my teacher is sick. But other than that, I don't have a lot planned. And that's probably when I'm going to end the vlog. One of these days, I'm going to film a whole week in my life. There's going to be clips of me actually being in school and like doing the thing. But this week, that just, that just didn't turn out the way I was planning. So yeah, <sighs> bye. <laughs> Don't you just love when you're like writing a book and you think you're writing like the best scene ever. But then while writing said scene, you figure out, oh, this is a huge, well not huge, but sort of huge plot hole that like it's gonna take time to fix and coming up with an entire like magic system, it does a lot to your brain. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe I should just go back to reading because that world's already figured out, you know, by, by the author. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> frick. Okay, so it's almost six o'clock now and we have another situation where I kind of just forgot to film the entire day. I was supposed to have class earlier today at 8 a.m. but I didn't go because I just wasn't feeling that great. And it was a virtual class so I'm pretty sure it was recorded. And if not, the material at this point in time is easy enough to follow along with so it won't really be an issue for me in terms of catching up. As far as reading goes, I am about 50 pages into The Lost Apothecary. I am enjoying it so far. We are on our own for dinner tonight. So we're having like a sort of breakfast for dinner type situation, like everything bagels with bacon and a egg. So while I wait for dinner to be ready, I'm gonna read some more of this book and I'll let you know how that goes. part of this engagement ring set that I got. There is the set that I unboxed in the Renmus vlog, one of the Renmus vlogs that I posted when I was doing Renmus, obviously. Um, but that set that I originally got didn't fit. And aside from, you know, possibly resizing it, the only other option was to get one of those little plastic things you put on the inside of a ring to make it fit your finger better but that didn't work either. So I was like, I want to keep that set. Obviously it has engravings on it that make it personal to me and I don't want to lose it. 
possibly by having it like fall off. So I just decided to like put it away and you just get a cheaper set off of Amazon and use that until it tarnishes and it's not usable anymore. So that's what I did. I got this beautiful set. It was a Clotta ring and then another ring um, that came with it. They fit together as one of those. And it also came with a ring for my fiance. We're that couple that both wear rings for their engagement period, besides the point. I ended up putting the rings in my pocket while I was washing my hands earlier. And then while I was waiting for the bus stop, I took these gloves actually out of my pocket, which were in the same pocket as the rings. And I guess the claw dog part of the ring set fell out and I didn't notice. So um, if anyone <laughs> found that ring at that random bus stop that I'm obviously not going to name, um, hope you enjoy because I figure it's a nice ring. You might as well keep it. So other than that, I it was an okay day, I guess, up until that point. I got some new mascara and foundation because the original foundation I had made me look like an Oompa Loompa. Um, so I was able to get that done. Not much else to update you on. As far as the ring stuff goes, I'll be fine. The value of that part of the set, that ring that I lost, it may have been like $10, but also it had a, already had so much sentimental value to me that it did it does really, really suck to lose, and I've kind of been in a bad mood all day, I think, understandably. So I'm going to hold off on, like, ring shopping for the time being because I just I don't want to go through that again. I'd rather us uh, save up for a ring that I don't have to take off. I think that's just the answer to all of my jewelry-related problems is just getting jewelry that'll last even when I wash my hands with it on um, and sleep, you know? Because, like, God... <sighs> I don't want to ramble on for too long, so I'm going to end this vlog here. Make sure to like, subscribe, and to do whatever the hell you want in life. Make sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified anytime that I post. Hope you have a great day and your night whenever you are watching this, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!